So today we're going to go over installing uh, RV4 footwells and this video is going to show you some basic metal work, uh, prepping the metal, deburring, dimpling, and riveting. So let's show you how we did it. So as we start any project, we've got to look for the pitfalls. And the one thing we've got to be careful here is when we put these footwells in, we've got to make sure it's not going to contact the aileron push rods. So there's going to be the final installation there. You can see that uh, it's not going to hit. There are some plans for the RV4, but we're not going to use them. Uh, we're actually going to use uh, parts from the RV8 and make them fit uh, to our RV4 for a little bit less work. So there is the plans for the RV4, a little bit different dimensions. But we can make the RV8 ones work just by using these F829 parts, two sides and a footwell for each side. Now we'll start with my making a pattern, which is the same process that we used when we made the upholstery for the RV8, just using particle board or thick poster board to make edge transfer that. In this case, to a 32 thou piece of aluminum, and then uh, cut that out. Obviously we're going to file and sand the edges like we do any normal metal work with the aluminum, making it nice and smooth, getting rid of all the burrs. And a nice tight fit. Uh, we'll have to work around a couple of the bulkheads. We don't want it to be too tight. We obviously want this to be removable, but we do want to take up the gap and make sure nothing can fall in there. All right, now we're going to assemble the parts. These are again are the RV8 parts, the F829 series. And the sides won't fit initially, we got to cut just using some tin sips. Cut that relief there, which is actually indicated in the plans, and there's a couple holes actually on the part itself showing you where to cut. So tin snips work fairly well for this simple project. And there's a left and a right tin snip. The left one there is the red, the right one is the green, and now the sides will fit in. So we'll clico it all together. And all normal metal working with aluminum is then using a drill to drill out the holes to number 40, and then taking it apart and deburring it. So we drill out the holes with the number 40 bit. After we drilled out all the holes, we're gonna move all the clicos over by one and then drill out the remaining holes. Now we drill out the remaining holes and now we're ready to disassemble the part and prep it for riveting. We'll take off the blue plastic now and then we'll deburr all the holes on both sides before we prep the part to rivet it together. And you can put a little extension on the deburr tool to access the holes on the inside. Like every other part, we are gonna file and sand it with emery cloth to make sure it's smooth to the touch so we don't get any stress risers. This is a 150 grit emery cloth that I use on all the surfaces, all the edges rather. I'm not trying to scuff the aluminum here, we're just trying to clean the edges. And now we're ready to assemble everything back together and get ready to rivet. These are the rivets I'm going to use. They're actually domed head, 332nd inch rivets. Not a typical rivet that's used on RV aircraft. And I'll show you different types of ways to rivet. So the first one we're going to do is by using the hand squeezer, which is fine for the 332nd inch rivets. 
Uh, if you get up to the 8th inch rivets, that hand squeezer is going to be a little bit of a grunt work. Uh, but for these ones, it's fine. So I'll show you all the different techniques here. So we move the Clico over. We put the rivet in. And then we squeeze it with the hand squeezer. And then we have a measuring tool to make sure that we've squeezed it enough. And if we haven't squeezed it enough, we just adjust the tool and redo it. Now here's the tool that I prefer, the pneumatic squeezer. And like I've said in the other videos, uh, this thing is 3,000 PSI, so you better know what you're doing uh, before you pull that trigger. Uh, but it is a nice way to rivet uh, with one hand. So there you see the rivet in there. And simply squeeze it down. You can see how if you're not perfectly on the rivet or you accidentally hit the part or you're off the rivet, uh, 3,000 PSI is a, is a big deal. Here's just an example of how fast uh, you can get away with riveting with the pneumatic squeezer. So there's literally eight rivets done in about 20 seconds. Now here's the traditional way to rivet using a rivet gun and a bucking bar. And we have to do this in this part because we can't access those two rivets right at the bottom. So again, we just use a cup heading on the rivet gun itself. I use a tungsten bar on the inside, or you can use steel. And we just basically hammer the rivet until it's squeezed enough. So thinking about orientation for these, if you put them in so that the smaller angles to the front, they will actually hit the aileron push rod. So you have to reverse them, put the steeper angle to the front of the airplane, and really, we're just doing this for the comfort of the passenger so that they can have their feet in a bit a more pleasing uh, location. It's a little bit hard on the legs for long flights to have your legs flat. Now, we're to put these. We could slide them all the way out, but if the rivets are going to interfere with the longerons. So we'll slide them in about uh, three quarters of an inch so that we, the rivet's clear. But we'll just mark where that ends up being. And then we'll mark a rivet line since these parts aren't really designed for this floor. In the RV-8, they will screw on on the front and the back. So we'll just mark where we want the rivet line, mark where we want to trim the part. And we space the rivets out by about one inch. And now we'll drill all the holes. In this case, we'll use the pneumatic drill now. I use an electric drill most of the time because uh, most of the time I find when I'm at the hangar I have uh, kids with me so quieter tools is always the tool of choice. Again a number 40 bit through both parts. Nice firmly clicoed in place to keep everything aligned. Now we'll mark where the edges of the cutout that we want to do. And it's going to be a little bit of a curved surface at the corner. disassemble everything we have it all marked where we want the cutouts to be and we'll just outline that with the ruler uh, before we cut it out The edges are going to have a contour to them so there's a few ways you can do this just trace around a socket like that or you can actually measure in our case, we're going to use uh, 5 8 inch holes in the corner. So we'll just measure in half that distance. So we know where the center of the hole ends up being, and then we'll use a unibit to enlarge it. So we measure in 5 16 Drill that with a smaller bit, and then we'll go at it with the unibit afterwards. This smaller unit bit only goes to half inch, so we'll just go all the way through with that one, and then we'll use the larger one to go 5 8. Now here's a little trick to make sure you don't go too deep. Actually mark where the 5 8 inch uh, step is on the unit bit with a nice marker that's very clear, so you don't accidentally go too far. And you don't have to read the small little numbers on there every time.
So now how to cut these parts out. We're going to use a nibbler tool. Uh, in this case, this is only 32 thou aluminum to use a tool like this. It is a bit of a grunt work. Uh, you will have to use a file and emery cloth to clean up the edges. Um, but 32 thou is probably the max thickness that you could use a tool like this. Other ways you could do it, you could use a jigsaw with a metal blade on it, but you will have to protect the aluminum because it will mar the aluminum a little bit. So you have to use some masking tape to protect the actual aluminum from the jigsaw. Or you could use a Dremel tool or a cutout tool pneumatic like this and just go along the edge. But the pneumatic one isn't too bad. Switch hands every once in a while and it does a nice job. Now how to trim the flanges that we don't want on. We could use tin snips here. They will deform the edge of the aluminum a little bit. So cut the aluminum way kind of in quarter inch increments. But you will have to file and sand the edge a little bit. It'll make it a little bit rough. So with any metal working, we're gonna file the edge nice and smooth and then sand it with 150 grit emery cloth. Another way to do it is to use the bandsaw. Makes a nice straight cut, but it is loud if you have kids around. And now we'll go and deburr everything before we do the final riveting of the footwells to the actual floor. When you're deburring, you just want to remove the burr. You don't want to remove any excess material. You're not trying to create a dimple here. You're not trying to countersink. You're just getting rid of the burr that sticks up on the edge. So nice, light, two spins of the deburr tool, and you're fine. Right now for dimpling the holes, because we're going to have flush rivets attaching these, we can use the hand squeezer. We just tighten up the throat of it until the two dimple dies contact each other. And then I rotated another half. Put that in the hole and create a nice dimple, making sure, of course, that you're doing it in the correct orientation. So there's an example of using the hand squeezer. Again, we can use the pneumatic one. We'll do the same thing. We'll adjust it until it bottoms out and then we'll spin it another extra half always keeping in mind this thing is 3000 psi don't get your fingers caught in there and don't dimple in the wrong spot you can see how fast and efficient it is as long as you're doing it carefully you can also use a tool like this this is really designed for kind of trailing edges of control surfaces to reach in tight areas but it is a possibility Or you could dimple using a C-frame. This is typically used for wing skins or fuselage skins where you can't access it from the edge. And once we get it all dimpled, we'll clico it back together and now we're ready to rivet. So we'll start with the pneumatic riveter. We've replaced the sets on it with flush rivet sets for flush rivets. There's the tool we're gonna to use to make sure we've riveted enough. Put the rivet in place and give it a squeeze, and if the rivet hasn't gone enough, we simply adjust the throat of the pneumatic riveter and squeeze it again. So you can see when we put the tool on that the rivet fits through the hole, so it has not been riveted enough. We need to go more. So adjust the throat depth again, squeeze it again. And how this little tool works is it should not fit over the rivet that direction and it should not fit over the rivet that direction, meaning we've done it enough, but not too much. It's just a close-up example of the rivet gun itself. A nice quick way to get all the rivets, so long as you can reach them. These middle ones here we can't reach with that, 
So we're going to show you back riveting technique. We'll take all the Clicos out. We'll fill the holes with the rivets. And then we'll tape over them with a special back riveting tape, which I highly recommend. Don't use masking tape because as you rivet, the masking tape will go into several different pieces and you end up picking it off with your fingernail. It's a bit of a pain. It's not expensive stuff and it's meant for that. We put the bucking bar on the back or on the work bench. In this case, a flat plate of steel. All the rivets in place, taped in, lay the part face down. And now we'll rivet from the back, hence the name back riveting. A really nice, quick way to set the rivets. It really is one of my preferred ways of riveting. In fact, I'd probably back rivet this entire thing on if I didn't want to show you the different methods. There's the back riveting set, this is what it looks like. Screw it onto the rivet gun, and it just pushes down the plastic shielding. Give it a little squeeze, and then the rivet's done. Super simple, fast way to do it. And just pull the tape off and we're done. Now in our case, we have existing holes and nut plates in the floor already. So how do we get these onto the part that we just made? So we'll put our template back in place. Then we'll mark where those holes are. And I use these A and 3 bolts, which have been ground down to a little bit of a bullet shape. We marked on the side of the fuselage approximately where the hole is. And then just use these different A and 3 bolts to mark where the holes are. And once we've marked all the holes, we'll just take the pattern out, transfer it to our floorboard. Tape it onto the piece of aluminum, and then drill number 19 drill for all the holes that exist. So that's a quick, easy way to find an existing hole in the fuselage and transfer it to a piece of metal. Works surprisingly well. And then we're done. We'll screw it in place, make sure we have no issues. And why'd we go through all this? Well, now we can put the seats in, we can put the roll bar in, we can start working on the throttle and the switches. Uh, in the next video, we'll start talking about uh, avionics and flaps. Build yourself something, take it for a rip. Well, I'll see you on the next one. <laughs>